welcome everyone to Virtual Vibe uh, with Pierre and Parvez. This is yeah. the show we meticulously prepare for. We know everything about the guest uh, who shows up. I'm kidding. We don't prepare at all. We don't prepare. We don't prepare at all. Well, I, I did, zero, I zero, week, zero I effort with, goes with into your, this. With those pictures of you, I prepared last week those pictures of you. So that, uh, that I just want to say, research. Pierre, yeah. something is going to come up soon. In This is what, episode 10, yeah? Or episode 9? No, this is 9. I, no, I, this is, sorry, this is this 10. This is 10, yes, yeah. So is yeah, 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 expect right. something on episode 11 or 12. I'm cooking up something. <laughs> All right, baby. So, like man, it. who who's the who's the nobody with us today, man? Pierre. Well, let me introduce you. This is Travis. Travis joined fairly recently, I'd say, maybe a couple. Of, is it a couple of months already, Trav? It was. I joined part time back in July, I believe, and then full time in uh, beginning of October. Yeah. Yeah. So Travis works in our community team and he also looks after our social channels as well. But I think you'll probably do a much better job of explaining what you do. Uh, my name's Travis Blue Collar Crypto on uh, on Twitter. Um, plug, plug, plug. And, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I deal with community. I deal with uh, partnerships and kind of you usually see me on the virtual account on Twitter spaces and such um, throughout the day, hanging out, listening, doing a little chat and all that. That, that's pretty much my day um, and all of it without pants on now that I can work from home. So that's pretty awesome. Excellent. Excellent. I don't, mean, don't, 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 sta- don't, don't stand up, please. <laughs> don't stand up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, last time Pierre stood up, I was a bit nervous, but he had pants on. So. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. I mean, it's it's Pants Thursday, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, wait till Friday. Where are you from, man? Where are you yeah. from, Travis? I'm in uh, the U.S., Missouri, actually. Uh-huh. Missouri, I believe it's uh, called outside of my state here. And uh, it's kind of the <laughs> armpit of the USA. We're just here, flyover country in the middle. Wow. It's so, what, it's, I, can't, I can't think. Is it, in, is it in the middle of the U.S.? Yeah, we're like smack dab in the middle. Like, from north to south and east to west, like right there, center. Do you wander out the door and have to fight your way through rednecks? Is that how it works? No, I, I like can wander out my door. I could sit on my front porch naked and no one knows it until the mail comes if I'm still wow. there. So it's great because, you know. I mean, I, no, thanks for putting it in context that you live in a wide open space. I love the, I love the analogy you use there. <laughs> I've got chickens and dogs and pig. And, really? Uh, you have a the, farm? The indoor farm. Oh. I guess you could say my yeah. my wife, uh, her best friend and companion is a pig. She sleeps on the couch with us. No, or, you know, sleeps in the bed with us. Lays on the couch with me. Snuggles me when I'm a little. Uh, how, sorry, how big is this pig? Is it like a is it like a little pig like from Moana or is it a big? It it, it used to be a little pig like that. Now um, he's two hundred fifty to three hundred pounds. Oh, um, God, that's like Pierre size. Yeah, close, close. Um, yeah, I, I, anything under six hundred pounds is a mini pig. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Under six hundred pounds is a mini pig. So it's not like an uh, a farm pig or anything. Weigh like twelve hundred, but it's a oh, wow. It's a Pierre. Do the, how you, your kids? Do they, were they able to ride it? I mean, is it the, like no. do they jump on it? I mean, they could. They could. He's like, I feel like he's four foot wide, but. When he lays on the couch, somehow he is able to take up almost the whole couch. They're super smart. Like pigs are like super, super smart, probably smarter than my kids. And uh, a lot of times smarter than my kids, actually, I would say. But he doesn't want to be ridden. He wants to like to lay on top of you and try to crush your bones because he thinks he's still like lightweight. I tell people I I sleep next to that pig each night and they they assume I'm talking about my wife and I get to quickly (laughs) tell them like, no, I'm, I'm not. I promise. (laughs) <laughs> how did you how did you cope when you were in Vegas then when, when you were pigless? I mean, did you not sleep? I, I was perfectly fine. My wife, on the other hand, she would have to like, uh, you know, Zoom call back here to the house. And the thing is, is like no one likes the pig nearly as much as she does. Like she thinks the pig's the greatest thing in the world. 99% of other people that meet him, they're like, all right, yeah, cool. It's a, it's an animal. Like I'll feed it and let it out. She's like, well, he likes music and he wants to watch this. And he went, I'm like. Oh gosh, we, we can't, we look crazy, babe. We can't tell how, people. How do you guys, just, like, how did this happen? Do you all decide, do you decide always to have a pig? She has talked about a pig uh, for, for ever, um, one and one. And I was always like, you're, you're crazy. No, it's not happening. And she caught me in a moment of weakness one night. And I was like, all right, fine, we'll get a pig. 
And immediately within like seconds, she already like had a phone number that she was calling. Like she had this all lined out and prepared in advance. It was, it was a planned attack. Fascinating. What's that? that? Fascinating. Wow. Is it house trained? Oh yeah. Yeah. They're, they're actually super clean animals. They, they like won't go to the bathroom inside. Yeah. He'll sleep in his cage at night. He wakes up in the morning. He now knows how to let himself out of the cage in the morning. So that's fun. And he'll come in there and scream at us at five in the morning or so when he's ready to go outside and hang out. It's That's fantastic. Quite the life. They, they live for 20 years. So I got a lot more time ahead of me of this exciting, <laughs> well, nice, wonderful man. world. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Were you always in misery? I mean, is that where your your background? In you, misery? In misery? He's in a good place. He's in a good place. He called it misery. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was I was born and raised here. I moved to Wyoming for a little bit right after I turned 18. Me and four buddies just like packed up trucks and took off and went and went to college there and lived there for a couple of years and then said I was never coming back and then quickly returned. So and I've been, been back here since. It's like one of those places you live that like you're like, oh, everywhere else is so better, but at the same time, it's home, so you just like can't leave, and you always find yourself like coming back. Uh, yeah. So I'll probably be here forever until <laughs> I'm like God or something one day. Hey, I, I I've done the same thing, and I just think as long as you're as long as you're happy, doesn't matter. What do yeah, you do, Pierre? Like, what, like what are you talking about, Pierre? Moving somewhere well, as else? In, as in moving moving back to where you grew up? Ah, okay. Which is which is what me and my wife did, and uh, you know this. As long as you're happy, who cares? I swear, it's like me as well. I came back to Dubai. I was in the States for like 10 years. I came back. Where did you live yeah. in the States? I was in Oklahoma and in Boston. Ah, yeah. Oklahoma is real similar to Missouri. Uh, yeah, so, it is close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big 12. Yeah, it's close and similar. Yeah. Uh, another little flyover state. So, yeah, you, you, you know you know the struggle of uh, being being kind of the forgotten one within the oh, within man, Oklahoma is forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah. Unless you're a Sooner, then you have your football team. Yeah, I'm a I'm a Mizzou guy. I I uh let's see. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there we go. What, so what are, I don't know what that is. What are what are the Tigers? They, sorry, they're a football team? Yeah, it's the University of Missouri College. Not uh, not okay. uh football. not the football you're thinking, oh. Pierre. No, real football. Yeah. No, no, fake, that, foot, the, fake uh, football. Yeah, you, you can th- you can do that all you want. I don't. I I'm not into <laughs> soccer, as you would call it. I hate it. There's nothing. It's got nothing for me. <laughs> oh, we're getting our first yeah, uh, soccer p- team here. We're just about to have a few soccer teams and soccer players. Um, yeah. On virtual. I know. I'm having to pretend a lot. And and, 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 and Pierre's like, oh. <laughs> It's like, I'm, I'm going to be like Donna, right? So when we're talking to F1 teams, Donna will go, oh, look, let's do some video footage with the players. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the drivers, right? And I'm going to be the same. And then she comes to ISL people. and then she says, oh, look at those drivers. I'm like, those, those are players. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to let her forget it. <laughs> how, how did this happen? How did you end up in virtual? Virtua, you know, was created years back and in the original um, mission statement for Virtua to be a success one day, you know, Travis would be brought into the mix. Mm. And that was kind of the goal of Virtua from the start to to get me on board. So I, I'd say it's been a success. Uh, I mean, no, it took years I, I, of trying. Yeah, yeah, we've been, yeah, we've been yeah. chasing you yeah. across the States for year, five years now. <laughs> oh, and we went, yeah, finally no, went mean, to misery. Misery, misery about me. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wait, no, no, there's I, pigs I, I, and naked people sitting on their porches. We, we found them. We found the one. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's, it's hard to miss once you find it, you know? But uh, no, I uh, started as a DJ, a fan, uh, a community member. And when Cardano Island was, was first kind of launching, I was uh, annoying and bothering and blowing up Yak all the time. Like, hey, uh, you know, you guys should do this and this. You guys should appear on this and this. And you guys should go on this Twitter space or that Twitter space and trying to, you know, kind of guide and help them to uh, obviously pump my own bags um, at the time. So, <laughs> and Yaka eventually was like, hey, um, do you do you want to come join us and kind of help us with this stuff since, since you know it pretty well? And I was still working construction at the time. And I had always said, like, I will not leave my fiat job for Web3. I love construction. I really did. But uh, I really, really loved 
work it. You know, I, I started part time, told the actor, like, um, let me keep my fiat job. I'll come work part time and was doing that for, for a few months. And I loved it. And I loved like the people here. I loved, you know, the job and everything else. So it made it real easy to go to full time. I, I don't think I would have started here full time, to be honest. I, I would not just virtual, but anywhere else. I was just, you know, you were dabbling. Web3 is so different from construction, you know, w working from home and on computer and stuff is so much different than screaming at guys from a lift and throwing hammers at people. And have you found it an easy adjustment? I mean, do you miss being outside? And no, not at all. I honestly, to tell you that you're like, so like right now for a couple of weeks, I'll probably miss it. But as soon as it gets back down to uh, like winter weathers mm. here in a few weeks, yeah. I guess it's like negative 10 Celsius is about what it'll get to here sometimes or negative eight. Okay. That's quite cold. Yeah, yeah. So it gets freezing. And so it's, it's nice not having to deal with that. Just kind of, I don't even know what temperature is outside when, when those happen. And at the same time in the summer here, it gets brutal. Mm. Like it's real hot. I remember here in this past summer over in uh, the UK, the heat wave and how everyone was like melting and. Oh yeah. And I just looked at that the was harsh. Yeah. I, I looked at the temperatures and I was like, I would love if it got down to that here. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah, but the not... thing is in the UK, right? We're not set up for extremes, right? So it's no when it's <laughs> when it snows, everyone crashes, right? On the in the car. And then when it's hot like it was, I think it was like in the I think a couple of days we had 40 or 41 or something like that. And we're not set up for that, right? So we don't have any air con or anything like that. And so, yeah, you know, it's just yeah, I'd be living in my car with the air conditioning blasting if I didn't yeah. have uh, yeah. air conditioning and heat. I uh, will give you that because I'm a I'm a princess with the AC. You know, I, if yeah, especially like when I was working construction, I'd come home like soaking sweaty wet, and then just like lay on top of an air conditioning vent in my house when I got home, and it was yeah, yeah, the greatest yeah. thing. <laughs> That's what I'm like when I go to Dubai. I like I, I want to find the coldest room I can possibly be in. But dude, you've never <laughs> been here in the summer, right? You only been here when? Yeah, no, I, ha I have, I have. Was uh, that summer? No, I was in. In July, I was over for a bit. Oh, July, oh, oh. I, and I remember getting off the plane, and it was like literally, yeah, yeah, like yeah. it felt like I just someone had just opened the oven door. Was, like, was that when you went for the the desert safari as well in July? No, that was the no, that was November last year. Oh, that was good then. That was a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah July. I need to get to Dubai. Uh, what? I've all, I've, I said I need to get to Dubai. Uh, man, uh, yeah, I, but I, bring I, you I, over, man. I see the videos and the picture. I, I'm just like scared because every like from what I hear, every 16 year old has like a gold plated Ferrari, and I'm no, gonna, like, it's just up, like, like no, 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 nah, no. I'm not driving a Ferrari. Perfect. So, Travis, tell us, tell us about your day. How, how did you fill your busy virtual work day? So I'm in the U.S. and a lot of the team that I work with is U.K. and um, Dubai. So I usually, you know, wake up into like four or six hours into everyone else's work day. Who's and, in Dubai? Uh, Only me. No one else, right? Oh, was there anyone else in Dubai for you? I don't know. I'm Jawad's in Dubai. Ah, okay, okay. Dubai. Like that as well. Yes, um, yes, yes. Correct. For your AMAs and whatnot. Correct. Yeah. And then some of the, uh, some of our branding posts and stuff like that, like, uh, goes out from Dubai and stuff. So, but, uh, yeah, so I'll wake up and go through, see what we got, uh, rolling out for the day, get my social media posts planned up. And it's usually about a few hours of, um, jumping on calls and meetings with, other projects, communities, in team, such like that. It's awesome. I mean, I, I really do love it because the coolest thing is what I was always doing before I got paid was like hanging out with communities and projects and talking with them and networking. And now I'm just like getting paid to do it. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's so really, that, that's pretty awesome. It's a good segue into when did you begin? Crypto, into web, or, crypto, crypto, NFTs, Web 3.0, as they say. So I guess I somehow and i don't remember doing it downloaded a, a robin hood app and bought dogecoin like years and years like before it was anything i guess mm -hmm. and then COVID, it like spiked up and it was like going to those crazy prices for some reason and i happened to open the robin hood app and i was like holy shit. like or shoot <laughs> but i was like <laughs> it's too late now you've done it <laughs> well i, I think Pierre, but, uh, that, that's like, an accepted word in 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 the in the dictionary, right? For us, no? Shoot. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, oh shoot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, so, so when you opened your app and it's, and everything spiked, we like, now I can get some pigs, man. I didn't even know it spiked. Like, I didn't even know crypto at the time. Like I knew crypto, but I wasn't really involved with it. And when I saw that suddenly I was like, 
I'm a crypto pro. Like I'm a professional <laughs> trader. Like, what am I doing working? Look at me. And uh, I cashed out that Doge um, and, and decided to, to dress down JPEGs. That was don't tell the wife. Oh, nice. A couple of years then. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a couple of years. And, uh, you know, it, it was, I, I found Cardano right as they started launching NFTs on Cardano, which was March of, I believe 2020. Yeah. 2021. Um, and doing that and then saw, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to start buying these NFTs to try them out because all I see is everyone's, you know, making a million dollars on these little pixel images. And and dove in over there in Cardano really kind of went real head first. But mm -hmm. when I when I jumped in, I, I went about it a little different. I went in and I just started networking with projects, with developers, with builders, with communities, and really tried getting in. Because I was like, if I can get in with those people, then I get all that you know insider trading info, which didn't come about. My plan didn't work out there. But uh, I made a lot of really cool relationships, and it's. It's really helped me with stuff like with, with, with what I'm doing here with virtual because I have so many contacts now and so many people that I'm, you know, good friends with over the Internet that it makes my job a lot easier when it's like, hey, do we have, you know, something for this? I can usually have a contact where I can reach out to and mm -hmm. find it. So. How, how does the how does the networking happen, though? Do you just jump in and just talk to them? Say, hey, I want to learn some more about your project. And then you start because physical networking is so different from this. Oh my gosh. Digital networking, yeah. right? Like, how would you so even begin to? Yeah, I've, I've never, I was never like someone that like, I don't have online friends, you know, I was like one of those, like anyone I knew was like, you know, IRL, like physical, yeah. uh, you know, knew, yeah. knew, knew them in person. And then getting on like crypto Twitter and discords and all these platforms that I love to hate, but are so useful. I don't have much of a uh, filter I guess you could say I'll dive right into any conversation. I'm not scared to, uh, you know, get involved in a talk and I have a lot of opinions, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm always happy to share them. Usually a bit too much. My wife will tell you, but, um, but yeah, so I just, you know, when, when there were conversations going, I would just butt in and join the conversations. And when there was a Twitter space going, I would just, you know, jump up into a speaker role and butt in and I did, you know, started, meeting people started building relationships and got into private messages and now i'm in all kinds of different private telegram groups and discord groups and such where i talk to them more than my own family sometimes oh, i heard when you were at um cnft con it took ages for you to get across the room because you were every five paces you're like oh, oh yeah yeah i knew a lot of people there a lot of people there and it wasn't time like you know there'd be times like Hey, we got to run to dinner. We, we got to be at dinner in five minutes. It'd be like me, Ash and, and, and Yaka and Wendy. And we'd, we'd be going and it was like, you know, get by this table, walking through the casino towards the restaurant and they'd be like, Hey, Trevor. And I'd stop and I can't be rude. So I'd be like, Hey guys, what's going on? Um, trying to get dinner or, you know, and, and then it would keep happening. Ash would be like, we got to leave for dinner an hour early to, to walk through the casino lobby to, to, to get anywhere. But it, it was, Vegas Policy. was so cool. It was so awesome. And it was awesome because uh, not only meeting everyone, because you see the PFPs and you see everyone online, but it's just completely different seeing people in person. But even from the virtual booth, like I did not get to go around to like any booths at CNFT Gone. I was in the virtual booth the entire time, which was not my plan uh. at all. <clears throat> but it was a it was a really good problem we ran into because there were constantly people there. And we were able to help people understand what virtual was on a different level. Sometimes uh, people don't get it from the Twitter posts and they don't have time yeah. to go through the YouTubes and the medium articles. So when you have that face to face kind of stuff, you can really um, break down through some walls and, and um, answer some questions in a different way. Ash was surprisingly nice meeting him in person the first time. I was like <laughs> terrified. I was like, oh God, I'm going to get fired within the first hour. He's going to like be screaming at me the whole time. And then he was like super nice. And I was like, what is going on? Why did you think he was guy screaming at you the whole time? Everyone says that about Ash, right? Like <laughs> everyone, Ash, nice if you're guy. watching, come on, man. Come on. Be nice. No, he's like, he over, really is like over a call. Guy. Yeah, he's the <laughs> nicest guy in the world. And he's so. I think Ash is one of the best communicators, like as far as like when I hear him in these Twitter spaces and oh stuff like that. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 He knows he how to break awesome. it down. Oof. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. He, I, yeah, I think it like... just comes across very, you know, comprehensively and calmly and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah you can very really good. understand very what he's saying when he's talking to, you know, like some people, when they talk, they, you kind of get an answer, but don't really like get the full picture. Like you can really, he's a storyteller when he talks about it and he's great. It's just, and he's the nicest guy in the world. He just has an intimidating look, I think. And then like, you hear, <laughs> he was, like does MMA training and all this other stuff like this. I was like, oh, great. I'm going to get my. Who, who know, does MMA training? training? Don't start a fight with him. Don't start a fight with him. Wait, wait, wait. Ash <laughs> does <laughs> MMA training or is that? You oh, just... yeah. He's a badass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. He yeah. can have you anytime. Anytime. I watched him whip six guys in Vegas with his eyes closed while on a call. Yeah, I can believe that. <laughs> Yeah, very believable, Travis. Very, very believable. <laughs> I mean, that man has difficulty adjusting his camera, but he knows MMA. <laughs> hey, what do you mean adjusting, adjusting his camera? What are you talking about? Oh, he has a new camera, right? It comes front, goes back. Oh, oh, is... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, he's got this fancy new setup, isn't yeah, yeah, he? With yeah. a big screen on yeah. the wall, yeah. and you don't know where he's looking. He's like, oh. Can you hear me? I'm like... <laughs> Yeah. See when the meeting's now like forty foot away from the camera, yeah. small back of ash in the far back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he looks very uh, important now when he's like at his desk from afar. It's like a presidential conference yes. kind of thing. <laughs> no, he's a. He's let me, uh, then, let me just see if uh, let me just see if the actor's Yaka's. around because he said he's going to call. Hold on. Well, so Travis, Travis, call him live on air before Yaka comes on board, man. What are some of the stuff that you've um, seen recently in the space? right? That excites you. I mean, we're in a bear market, right? Yeah. But what do you think, since you've been in the space for a couple of years now, what do you think of the bull market versus the bear market? And, you know, what are your thoughts and how do you see us getting out of it? Uh, are things different from how it was back in the day? Yeah, I mean, I'm, and this is going to sound like demented, but I actually don't mind the bear market at all. Uh, mm -hmm. I kind of, like it right now and the reason being is because i'm a broke crypto boy so you know i don't have these like giant like uh you know legacy eth bags or you know bitcoin from 2011 or any of that stuff so the bear markets for me are great because i like to look in I i'm a terrible trader like mm -hmm. i do not trade i invest mm -hmm. because as soon as i start trading i'm selling the bottoms and buying the tops each time um and my kind of crypto journey plan is i don't plan on uh uh using any of my crypto investment or cash any of it out for like a five to ten year plan mm -hmm. um before i pull on it I'll, I'll live off my income until then and then when i have enough I'll, I'll start supplementing with crypto so the bear markets for me is where i can it's easier to kind of cut through the bs and see who's actually building who's actually doing stuff and i, I at least try to get a good sense of who's going to be here when the bull market comes back around because mm -hmm. we all i mean at least I know the bull market is going to come back around. I feel like we all know, you know, the market's going cycles and, and this is a down cycle, whether it lasts another week or five years, uh, the markets will come back. But for me now, it makes it a lot easier to cut through some of that noise in the, in the middle of a bull market, everything's going to the moon, everything's going to be the next, you know, yeah, big yeah. thing. And in the bear market, it really kind of quiets down a lot and yeah. you can really kind of see who's building. So that's why I really enjoy the bear markets because I'm buying projects and buying into not just NFT projects, but crypto projects in general on, on who I see still building that will, that, that I feel still be here when the bull comes back around and then I'm rich and loaded and living in Dubai. Do you think <laughs> Virtua driving around you go play a roller? I'll yeah. probably drive I'll, I'll probably drive you around. Thank you. Um do you think Virtua is set up for the bear market just because you know we continue to build we are building regardless we have tons of projects we have one converging end goal in mind right and we're not thinking oh bear market let's quiet down. So with your experience do you think we're doing the right thing we're actually you know, utilizing and taking advantage of the bear market. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I'll be honest. I would not be sitting here right now if I didn't feel that way. I would never taken a job mm -hmm. or, you know, left my steady income um, um, doing that. I've got four kids and a wife. So if like I joined a, a company that was, I, I didn't have full faith in my wife, uh, I'd be a missing person mm -hmm. after it, <laughs> it goes out. My wife would take care of me pretty quick. But uh, yeah, I mean, for one, 
Virtual has been through the bear markets before. Um, you know, we've been around for a long time. So we know how to like get through these markets where some projects, I think uh, a lot of projects right now are hitting their first bear market. Mm. Uh, we had a huge wave of projects in this last bull market. So a lot of them are hitting a bear for the first time. And a lot of them are understanding that 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 not everything's going to make it anymore <laughs> because once the funds run dry, then it's kind of, uh, we weren't prepared for this. So Virtua, I know they, you know, that that we're prepared to get through these markets and that it's gotten through those markets before. Virtua is like hiring in the bear markets, which is crazy to me. That's something you don't see in crypto anyways. Uh, so in a sense, I see Virtua kind of as um, one of those companies that I think crypto projects are going to more strive towards being able to become the more norm, where it's kind of got a little more of that Web2 type you're not relying on your Ethereum bag or, you know, ADA bag or whatever bag it may be of crypto to keep going up, to keep financing your business. Um, you know, you, you've got your plan and your budgets and everything laid out. And so that's what, why I joined Virtua and why as a DJ and I dove so deep into Virtua um, was because, yeah, I definitely saw that. Virtua is huge at the same time like it's a lot to grasp for a lot of people yeah because it's not just like a pfp project or just a metaverse or just a game like it's everything and more we got marketplaces we got an entire world building we've got all kinds of crazy utilities and ips and brands and all this stuff and so you know i don't think any project at this point is going to make it being a crypto project or marketing to the crypto community if the crypto community is your uh, market, then I, I don't know how sustainable it'll be for a lot of projects. Um, you know, you'll have some PFBs and stuff that will be fine and some niche games, but we really need to like look towards the global market and the things Virtua is doing to easily capture that global market is what gets me so excited. Like it's removing the barriers, a, a lot of those barriers that, that keep people from joining with, I would never let my child download a wallet and try to keep track of a 24 seed phrase and all mm -hmm. the all you know move yeah. money from an exchange to a wallet to buy this nft to stake that nft in this game to play this game but like with virtua you know we're, we're making it like any other game that's out there you know we're fitting to the current market you create a user profile and go and i can do that with my kids and i can see that catching on outside of the crypto space people that are scared and of nfts and blockchain and crypto they're just coming in to play a game like they do any of their other games they download so that's what has me really excited for Virtua because I think if we re relied on just the Cardano or Ethereum or any crypto market in particular, there's just not enough market there to make it make sense. I really yeah. see games and metaverses that do it right being one of the largest onboarding tools for blockchain that exists. And when I say that, like someone, if they come into Virtua, you know, a year down the road and create their virtual account and they have digital assets and all this stuff, they never need to know anything about the system it's running on, that it's on a blockchain in the back end. They're just playing their game, using their items, everything else. Anyone that's in crypto understands, well, I can move these assets to another wallet. I can move these assets to here. Anyone that doesn't is not ready for that step can just send their assets to, to a friend or you know use the virtual marketplace and all those kind of things. So it removes all those scary, scary barriers. And at the same time, kind of gives a launch pad of people from like not having to go straight to the, you know, understanding blockchain and creating a wallet kind of thing, but yeah. but kind of a middle ground where you can use blockchain without having to uh, do a two-week course on blockchain, I guess. I keep reading in places that, that our industry needs that sort of Candy Crush moment, you know, when, you know, like when Candy Crush came out and then it took mobile gaming to the absolute masses and it feels like, or what I would keep reading is, you know, and I think it's right that we, that, that we need, we need something like that to be an accelerant to, to really push it forwards out there. I think I 100% agree. Oh, good. You good. know, because I like some of the crypto games out there market to crypto and they market themselves as a blockchain game and as a crypto yeah. game. And we have NFTs and stuff. And 99.9% .9 of the world doesn't want that stuff. Yeah. Because uh, I have friends that are, that are heavy gamers and have nothing to do with crypto. And they, as soon as they see NFT, like don't want anything to do with it. But if we can remove that where they don't see an NFT, they see their in-game asset, mm. and that in-game asset, they have the ability to send it to a friend, send it to a cousin, send it to whatever. They're getting all those benefits of NFT and blockchain without realizing they're using it. 
So you just I, make... I think it's it's about it's about adding value, right? And not just shoehorning it in, which I think some players or sorry, better phrase, some businesses have been guilty of doing that in the past, right? Of just shoehorning it in with no value to the user. And it's like, well, why why are you doing this? What is it what is what's it gonna do for me? And it's got to be inherent in the experience, right? Yeah. I mean, I always say like the three pillars, it's gotta be easier, cheaper, and more convenient. And if you can hit all those three things, there's no reason why it shouldn't go to the next level because anyone will go with the easier, cheaper, more convenient. Mm -hmm. If I get a new credit card sent to me tomorrow, that's a lower interest rate. I'm going to cut up my old one. I've got no reason for it anymore. This one's cheaper, just as easy, just as convenient to use. Mm -hmm. So if we can do that in gaming and blockchain where, you know, they, they don't, people aren't going to care about the tech. I don't care when I swipe my MasterCard, you know, the, the process it takes to pull my money out of my account and give it to them. I just care when I swipe my MasterCard, I get my item yeah. and go out the door. Um, so when we can kind of like get that mindset in crypto a, as a entire community and more of these projects like Virtua is doing now can remove those barriers where people just come in and more or less swipe their card and, and, and go about their day it's going to uh, be relatable and familiar for them. And it's not scary when it's something you already know how to do and you already do every day. Yeah, I think it's a big moment, right? Um, I think last week, a couple of weeks ago, when Reddit, all the NFTs, they sold out. Um, and I've read one of the tricks mm. that they used was that they didn't even mention the word NFTs. They called it digital collectibles or assets. And that onboarded all these people. So it shows there is an interest. I also heard some some other, uh, another opinion about the number of wallets they had and all this. Sort really? Of stuff. What, so, what was it? Well, I can't quite remember the details, but it was, it was, it was kind of suggesting that the story was almost a little bit too good to be true, but I don't know if that's accurate or not. <laughs> I'll say, I think that it was kind of a, a mix. Mm. Um, I was personally in more than one um, private chat room, um, smaller group that I'm in of uh, with some whales in there um, encouraging each other to become exit liquidity for, for Reddit NFTs. They said, you know, hey, if we can buy these NFTs for crazy prices and these people on Reddit see that they can make ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on it, they're going to come in and be, be, become part of the community so you know i, I guess it's kind of a, a a way they were like marketing in a way like hey let's give them a bunch of money we'll try to get it back from them later kind of thing so uh yeah <laughs> i think it was a little bit of both because i definitely do know there was a bit of manipulation from some whales and stuff that were kind of using that to onboard some people but there was also i mean you, you, th there was definitely organic with it because it it got yeah. pretty wild um the the they had a good little 24 hours until Aptos came in and just crushed their dreams. And then they became the next talk of Twitter. Yeah. Um, and then Reddit NFTs kind of went quiet again for, for a minute. So it's all waves in this industry. Everyone's trying to get in early on the next wave going up. And I think once we get past that kind of cycle of everyone, like everyone going here and it, you know, rises, everyone dumps and then everyone's moving to here and it dumps. Mm -hmm. And once we get a little more mature as a community blockchain community, where it's like, we're not doing that as much and there's more mm -hmm. real money coming in to do real investments. I, I, I think it kind of levels itself out a little bit and uh, you know, the industry's so new, everyone's playing around. No one really understands all the right ways and wrong ways yet. So when, when we get a good book set, a good path on how it can be done and shouldn't be done, it's going to be a pretty wild time. I think. In, I, I like in, that in answer. Life. I like that answer. That's an honest, honest answer. <laughs> and, and hey, I am one of them that is chasing pumps, just like everyone else. So I am not above that by any means. I'm gonna try to get try to try to get the bread where I can. But um, sustainability long term. I, I mean, mean, because you know, if you go to Twitter, I mean, crypto Twitter, you see a lot of people talking about this is the playbook for a successful project. This is the playbook for you know marketing. And I'm like, D is it though? Do you really know, or you were just lucky, and now you're just preaching? You know what I mean? <laughs> There's a lot of people out there professing to be experts, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot of people. I just, Web3 is so strange. Like, you have something like Goblin Town, where is all they do is get on these, like, Twitter spaces and grunt and scream and have these crazy, like, really out there weird, like, events and stuff where they're running around as goblins in parks and all this stuff. And then that'll, like, go crazy sky high. And you're like, I don't get it. But then, you know, since they've kind of come back down to level and it makes a little more sense, like it, it was a hype train. And a lot of it, like you said, is there's a lot of luck behind a lot of them. You know, it just catches yeah. the right person that yeah. tweets it out the right way and suddenly it's taken off. But um, I, to, to be 
you know, long-term viable, I think that a lot of these projects need something behind them. I am one of those that sees a future for some PFP projects. I don't think there's going to be like thousands and thousands of PFP projects that are worth something, but I think everything needs a utility in this space. Yeah, yeah. Everything for an NFT. Um, and PFPs can provide utility, even if they have no game or anything like that. They can have the utility of a community. People pay a lot of money in the physical world for some of these social clubs and country clubs and, you know, access to, you know, some of these social networks. Right. So I can, I, I can see those type if a PFP project can build that type of community where people want to be part of it, as opposed to people want to find the exit liquidity or, you know, the next mm -hmm. person they can bring in to buy there so they can exit. I see those being success. Uh, NFTs in general, I see the gaming, the metaverse, the, um, real world utility attached to like businesses and stuff. I'm waiting for the day where like American airlines releases a NFT where you get, you know, 10% extra, you know, flight, you know, airline miles and visa releases something where you get a discount yeah. on, you know, your rates and all these things I think are coming. I mean, we saw a house sold. Yeah. 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 NFT yeah. Long yeah, ago. Right yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, I think of it like, I remember when, um, you know, when Amazon started, right. And, Everybody, no, no, sorry, it wasn't even Amazon. It wasn't even Amazon. It was when, when you know, when the web first came, right? And people were just like, "Oh, I'm just going to set up this business because it's got a website." And it's like, and there was nothing behind that business. It was just, you know, it's just a channel, right? And I feel the same. How this category has has started, people have just jumped in it. You know, the number of times I've had, yeah, you're so Web two. That's not Web three. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. the fundamentals are the same. That you still got to have a strong product and a proposition and understand the audience and have put some amazing comms together and the message and and the fundamentals are the same, right? The uh -huh. fundamentals are the same, but just th there are different approaches. Absolutely, hundred percent. But doesn't take away the need for having to do your homework properly. Right. I say all the time, like, like web two and web three marketing are like night and day different. I mean, you can't market a, a NFT project like you would a normal web two pro yeah, like yeah. new speakers or yeah. something like that. It just doesn't yeah. translate as well. You've got to be like, you got to know your market and you know, you, you got to fit in with your market and you got to have that culture and you got to have that, you know, DJ swag to you and, and people want to relate to you. Where in web two, it's a lot more like you would never see some of the, you know, marketing type tactics in, in web two company. You would never see some big brand like saying some of the things or, you know, responding the ways oh, they do no. and stuff like that. Um, in web two, we like, wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be doing this. Uh, we wouldn't do midnight vibes if if we were in Web two. You know, is that a new name now? <laughs> yeah. Our business has that like you know voice that. Uh, um, we, you know, we tried with PP vibes. That didn't stick. Now it's midnight vibes. I still like PP vibes. That's still. I that's, love PP vibes. I, yeah. Yeah, and then who was it? Chantel tried to make it PP squared. Was that Chantel? Oh, she tried P squared. P squared. P -squared. Yeah, P -squared. P squared. Yeah. 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 I'm a PP guys my guy myself though. Um I'm gonna start a show called Blues Clues one day. I'm just gonna release Alpha all day long. <laughs> Anonymously, so I don't get in trouble. But uh but yeah, so like the web two and web three, it's just it's it's different, but it like you're saying, Pierre, you still need a reason to want to be in there at the end of the day. Uh, you still need a, an actual product. And I think a lot of these product a lot of these NFTs and projects and everything launching now are really kind of laying a lot of that groundwork at the same time though and kind of writing that book for how people after them are coming in how how the large companies are coming in yeah. go, going to come in what works what doesn't i, I mean no, i've been on that journey myself mate right when i the, when i started and came in to compare to where i'm now i mean don't get me wrong still a ton of learning to do but it you know to use your phrase night and day between the approach i took when i started versus where we are today you know yeah, it, it, I'm, it, I'm it gonna like, I'm gonna write a book on it. I'm writing a book. Dude, maybe I should, should just interview you next time. No, you definitely oh, should. Pierre V1 when, when I've, and when Pierre I've written my V. When I book about Web3 marketing, yeah, when, it, when you can do that, we'll plug the book. Uh, but I, well, I welcome to PB here to book. With, with Parvez and Blue. We we got uh, Pierre yeah. joining us today. Dude, let's do it. Let's there do it. Go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we can we make it on can we make it the midnight show though so we can we can we can drink some whiskey and and have a good chat <laughs> let's bring yaka on too so we can be pbj with pierre there you go there you go oh man pierre yeah, so like you know usually every every show every pod we yeah. banter a lot this time i feel like there's been a lot of education it's just a bit weird know, no I'm, pierre I'm, it's, it's been i've been schooled <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, every I'll time this my wallet address afterwards <laughs> for tuition payment. There's a lot of back and forth that has happened. This is like, yo, okay, education. I know. I feel like I've not we've not taken the out of each other enough. I don't know what to Damn. do. I don't know where I am anymore. <laughs> I don't know. You guys aren't even like making fun of me or nothing. I feel like you know. Uh, well, yeah. you 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 had us at the beginning when you talked about your pig and everything. You know, we didn't know where to but go. But you were so that. earnest Pretty about well. yeah the whole thing, and no, it didn't feel like it didn't feel right. To roast you. you will not find anyone that makes fun of me more than myself i'm i'm like one of those guys that you can never offend me you can say whatever you want to me i'm gonna laugh about it like i'm a real like sticks and stones kind of guy like i, I like uh, i have fun making fun of myself i have fun making fun of other people i make fun of you guys all the time when you're not around it's it's <laughs> yeah. how I do it. I, I, you you, you do have that laid it, back you know matthew mcconaughey type all right all right all right thing going on all right all right all right, all right. <laughs> i live here in misery yeah <laughs> now, now i just need that matthew mcconaughey bank account now and, and i'll have the full picture <laughs> so what else man pierre do you want to do you want to drop any tidbits of what's upcoming for us um we, we need some alpha so, some what we call well, clues. something can new. we talk about your your um your cool thing that you lined up yesterday can we go with that i mean this isn't going to come out for about two weeks so where's the, the the cool thing the cool thing the... which one the one we published today a bit earlier the partnership oh no we haven't published that that was an internal no thing. we haven't published it Oops. that was just an internal thing yeah no i have uh is that, I'm is that a done deal uh the monster land is a done deal so we've got awesome. a partnership with them. Uh, then I've got a pretty exciting one tomorrow, but that one is not a done deal. But it it could be really cool. Um, so I'm excited. And then I've got a lot of other projects that I've been talking to. ETH, Ethereum projects are a bit different than Cardano projects as far as trying to like partner with them. I'm, I'm having to like make a big learning adjustment and learning shift on the fly too, because I was, you know, doing with Cardano Island, all the Cardano partnerships and bringing those in. I've got a lot of contacts in Cardano. So it was real easy to get to a lot of these projects. Mm -hmm. um, and when I can get, I, I would say if I can get on a, a call, a 30 minute call with someone, I will sell them virtually. Um, they will understand the vision and they will be all in because it's hard not to when, when, when you understand what we are getting on those calls with ethereum projects are a bit tougher because the ethereum space is so much noisier i guess with projects mm -hmm. uh, i know a lot of these you know blue chip type projects they're probably you know hit up 200 times a day for hey check out our project you know check out our project so trying to get through that noise um and once i can you know get on a call with them it's it's i feel like i have them in the bag uh we, we've had some real exciting calls um this week i've really kind of hit the ground pretty hard this week as far as with meetings and such with teams so here over the next few weeks it's going to be pretty exciting i think with, with who we bring on board i'm really looking forward to seeing who we get here we have a lot of you know, I do a lot with the influencers and uh, lining up those and scheduling like Twitter spaces and such with them because yeah. my number one thing is I do not want an influencer that's just like, send us money and your website and I'll put something together. Mm -hmm. I want to, any any of these influencers I work with, I want to get on a call with them. I want to go over what virtual is, what we're doing, ask me any questions. I want them to really understand it and I want them to cover it because it's something they want to cover. Uh, and to do that, I, I really, you know, need to do more than just send a pitch deck to them. Yeah. Uh, and it's been cool, like talking to a lot of these people. And like, at first, some were kind of like, all right, let's get this over with. Um, and then by about five, 10 minutes in, you see them like, you know, a little more interested. And then all of a sudden they're asking questions. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, where do I go to get this? And where do I go to get that? And you can kind of see it like starting to click in their head and then starting to like understand what it is. So that's been really cool part. And, uh, it's something I wasn't sure if it could have because a lot of these content creators, they're, they're busy, you know, they're, they're doing mm -hmm. a million things at once. So they don't have time to jump onto calls with everything they're covering with every token or NFT. So getting on these calls was something I wasn't sure was going to be possible, but I've had, you know, a lot of success. And I think that's because there's, there's a lot of other people in their circles that, that are starting to understand virtual as well and who we are and what we are. Uh, we're starting to, you know, Jawad's won like Meta Leader of the Year award. Two time um, winner, I think. Two <laughs> Yeah. Back to back champs. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, did you yeah. feel oh. did you feel robbed then, Pavez last year? I weekend? did feel because the first the time I yeah. picked up the award and I went around the room 
and I networked the hell out of the event as Jawad, right? <laughs> but this time he was present, so he he picked up the board. If, if, were you if sort I, of sitting I, I, in the corner thinking, should have been me? Um, I had to take a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> himself to sleep that night and <laughs> yeah. looked at the photo fall asleep. That was, that was it. was like as he was like, oh I'm announced oh, let me go pick it up hey can you take a photo I'm like oh, okay fine I'll take a photo <laughs> if I ever got to accept a reward uh, an award on behalf I'm wearing I'm renting a full tuxedo I'm like going like the tuxedo tail the hat I mean I'm gonna be as professional and and upscale looking as I can in the middle of a crypto conference full of folks in t-shirts and torn up <laughs> jeans and tennis shoes love it Oh, but, oh, oh by the way, the last time, the last, the event I went, uh, went for, um, they told come dressed business, business cash or business professional. I don't know. I wore a jacket wore the whole thing. And I went over there. Everyone was in t-shirt and jeans, <laughs> flip flops. It was in the middle of a pub, uh, open bar. So no one is paying oh. attention. Yeah. Open bar. No one's paying attention. Just call a name, pay, pick up the word. <laughs> There's nothing that annoys like me what I'm all right when you when you get told if you go to a restaurant they go right no flip flops right and I'm like I'm like some socks on and, and man I I've been and there's I've, someone there and there's someone there in flip flops I'm like yeah 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 dude I've been yeah in Dubai especially right I've been um, let's say politely saying not allowed to go in because of flip flops and or because I had sneakers on. You believe it? And then mm. as I'm walking back, they allow other people in. And I'm like, okay. Mm anyway, different story. Yeah. So you just gotta like, when, when you get there, you just got, do you not understand who I am? Do you know who I am? Not yet, baby. And you you not don't yet, even have not to yet. give a name. You're just like, right this way. You know, when midnight <laughs> vibes get gets big, then yeah. Oh, look at that guy. It's Parvez. Yeah, so, exactly. Your you know. name and face on the side of buses. Yo, yo and, Pierre, you know. don't, don't roll your eyes, man. Those eyebrows. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I waxed it. I waxed it before we came on today. You look nice. I look. You look nice. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, man, yeah, it's good um, conversation, guys. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm gonna have to get moving. Um, okay. So, I think we should just call sticking. call it an end. Unless, Pierre, you have a a joke or something. That's supposed to be your role, man. Oh yeah, where's the Dan joke? Yo, the comedian guy. Come on. They got so bad. I just couldn't do them anymore. The worst. I mean, they were the awful. Better. They were awful. It gives us all something to laugh about. The laugh right, issue about just, in well, that one uh, group we have that you're not in. What is the virtual team minus that? Is that? Group. <laughs> okay, I, I missed the abuse I got there. Actually. Well, everyone, Travis, man, it was a, it's been it was a blast. Thank you for coming, and uh, yeah, we so learned a lot. We learned a lot. Uh, less banter than usual, but man, this was an education. So thank you so much, Pierre, man. Till next time, everyone. Ta -ta. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Travis. Cheers, man. See you later.